Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Popco the Writers. Uh, tonight, we're going to have a uh, interesting show. We're going to talk about the latest on Jonathan Majors. We're going to talk about um, the casting of Superman and Lois Lane and why they went ahead and announced it, which I think is maybe obvious, might not. And of course, we're going to talk about the latest Secret Invasion, which had some interesting little fun twists in that as well. Wait, Plus, what's the, what's the tie-in with your Daredevil hat? Oh, there's a uh, um, there is okay. We'll go ahead and do this one now. There is an Easter egg in the uh, Secret Invasion to the Netflix Daredevil series. Oh wow! I obviously I missed that. There is a moment when Shooter McGavin, if you're a uh, Happy Gilmore fan, okay. Christopher McDonald's the guy, uh, one of the guys. He's doing. He's playing the uh, right wing TV host. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Well, if you on the screen, it's FXN News, which is Marvel's version of Fox News. Oh. Well, that name and that logo debuted in the Daredevil series in season three. Yeah, I would never have gotten that. Don't tell me you noticed that. Come on. Oh, no. Other people noticed that Other one. people noticed that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's deep. That's a deep dive. <laughs> it is. It absolutely is. Okay. So, you are completely justified by wearing that hat then. <laughs> Yeah, but then I figured we we're also talking about a Marvel show, and this is the only Marvel hat I have right now. Okay, I, I mean, usually you try to line things up more than yeah. more than just we're talking about Marvel. <laughs> but yeah, okay. if we were just doing the thing about Superman, I would have worn my Green Arrow hat because that's the only DC <laughs> I have right now. But Green Arrow knows Superman, right? <laughs> he, he does. Of course, he does. They're old friends. So Superman cut off his arm. <laughs> In another universe, yes. <laughs> yeah. In one version, I think it's no. Oh, well, well, and there's a Daredevil connection there, right? To, to Frank Miller. You're talking about something that happened in Dark Knight Returns. Isn't that when he gets? He no, the... no. Actually, that's in. That's later on when uh, the Parallax story. Oh, okay, because. Uh, for some reason, my mind went to Dark Knight Returns because I think he's missing an arm in that, and I think it's it's, it's Superman who's responsible for that. Yeah, I, I think listen. He is. I tried to tie it into Daredevil. <laughs> Frank Miller, Very nice. Yeah. Okay. Very hey, good to see you. Oh, hat trick. Nice. Um, all right, let's start, let's kick it off with we're going to talk about give you the latest update on uh, Jonathan Majors at least. I mean, it, it's kind of weird because some of the websites are covering it and others aren't. Mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. Deadline hasn't really said much. Variety, I think it was Variety or one of the, uh, maybe it was Rolling Stones, one of the ma magazines came out with this expose about all the, the, the negative stuff about him and all mm -hmm. these people talking about him. Mm -hmm. But a story that hit like People Magazine and a few other websites and it includes a, uh, a quote from his lawyer, is that he has filed charges against the woman in question, the woman right. that he spoke to have hurt. Right. Count, not, I mean, not really countersuing, but they presented evidence to show that she had actually attacked him, had uh, damaged his face, mm -hmm. and um, there is supposedly... Um, footage of that there's also footage of her after the alleged incident where she isn't injured and there's also supposedly again i don't know how what the veracity of this is but there's supposedly footage of a police officer coax, coaxing coaching her on what to say what about filing a report. Wow. So there's a lot of stuff out there. But um, wow. so they supposedly they had a meeting the other day with 
um, the NYPD in the uh, Manhattan station near Chinatown. I think mm -hmm. I've got that right. Mm -hmm. I know the Chinatown part was right, which is where the incident is supposed to have happened. And they presented enough evidence for them to issue a, it's kind of like a bench warrant. Yeah, yeah. And, but it wasn't, in that, they didn't actually go out and get her. Mm -hmm. But I don't think she's currently in the U.S. right now. From okay. what I understand, she's actually um, British. If what I, again, there's just a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. But she's supposedly not in the country right now and will be coming back. So it sounds like some, some of the news sounds like they're still moving full speed ahead on in going after him. And mm -hmm. other news, it sounds like, you know, they're going to have to change tactics. I guess uh, Majors also gave them um, evidence that she uh, went on and used his credit cards after the incident for six to seven thousand dollars worth of spending and stuff like that. So is it, is it a case that it's like the city or county that's after him? It's not really like her. even if she dropped whatever she's doing, it's still the city or county or what still thinks that they can charge him. Or yeah, it, I mean, it could be. Yes. Yeah. Because there are, they have gotten to the point where in domestic violence cases, sometimes the victim becomes scared or, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't want to move forward out of fear. Yeah. And then you end up with the, um, the, the district attorney's office, continuing forward with the evidence they do have right right to make it happen without putting them in danger so right. it is a possibility that maybe what they're trying to do yeah but it could also be and i hate to say this but it could be a da um practicing politics yeah. because if, you know they put away jonathan majors a big rising star yeah yeah so what um, what do you think about um Disney withholding the making of Quantum Mania because of supposedly because of all of this. I mean, I, I think they're acting with an abundance of caution. Hmm. You know, because we're not that far away from the next court appearance. Okay. That's August 3rd. So we're a month away. If they hold on to it until after that, they might have a better idea. And maybe they do think that this is going to clear up. Maybe they've, maybe, um, and again, all speculation, but maybe the lawyers showed Disney and Marvel, mm -hmm. look, this is the evidence we're presenting. Yeah. And maybe I mean, Marvel's like, sees enough that they're going to ride it out. Yeah. They do have a vested interest, you yeah. know, in it. And, and, and I know, I, I'm pretty sure we talked about this before that there's probably things in his contract about, he has to be an upstanding citizen, you know, or, or, or you can't get into trouble or something. You oh know, yeah. Like, yeah. There's, there's probably a, um, there's a term for it and it just slipped my mind. Mm -hmm. I know what you mean. I can't think of what it's called. Yeah. A decency clause. Yeah. Yeah. So what um, a story. It, yeah. I, I'm still hoping because, I'm hoping this turns out it's just a he said, she said, mm -hmm. and it ends up going away because there's a lot of people involved. Yeah. You know, and yeah. the ironic thing is that he's now dating an, another actress. Uh, I think her name is Megan Good, and she played in Shazam as the grown up version of Darla. Hmm. So she was the one in the purple yeah. suit, you know? Yeah. So it's just kind of interesting to me. And, and she's fully behind him, went to court with him. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it sounds like, you know, you're not, you had some initial turning against him, but that seems to have stopped. Yeah, yes. You know, and Disney could have come out and said, okay, we're going to go a different direction. We're going to get another actor. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to put out what he's already done. And then and and of all the characters you could do, you could change Kang. But conceivably, couldn't he then sue Disney? If, if he there's could, a clause like that. Then yeah. yeah. If, if, if his lawyer could argue 
that they had no right to do that because he hadn't been convicted or anything. Right. You know, yeah. Or they could just drop the Kang dynasty and just change directions. You could still ouch. do secret wars, but what if you suddenly make it Dr. Doom? Yeah. Ouch. I mean, yeah, I'm sure this is all the things that are going on, you know, in boardrooms and wherever else, you know, Marvel has a plethora of villains that they could, switch to sure sure so, or they I think could it, just change kings it just looks so bad you know for them the uh, best thing for most of i mean i don't know what the situation is i don't know mm -hmm. i mean if he's guilty and they can prove it then yes let's either change kings or change the character to somebody else and move on we don't you know but mm -hmm. if he's not but we should wait until he has his day in court which is what you know what innocent until proven guilty that's the way it's just it's gonna to say it. that right yeah mm -hmm. you know but uh mm. it's too often times that it's not that way yeah. you know you got too many people convicted and yeah you know, just if there's one I'm, thing i've learned from watching adam 12 is that if there's if the police can see evidence of of uh injury on on either the the man or the woman or or either side of the thing then they have to you know they have to take the take everybody in <laughs> yeah hmm. yep so we'll, we'll have to wait and see but august 3rd is the next court date mm -hmm. so um okay. i know what i hope but that's it's a selfish hope I will, that's what I was going to say. I don't know what I should be hoping for, who I should be hoping for. Um, you know, I want to say, yeah, I keep saying, like, it's a shame. It's a shame. Boy, this whole big, you know, uh, uh, Marvel, you know, tent and everything. And he was one of the big tent poles. And, and then it's like, yeah, but if he's guilty of being an abuser and, and, yeah. and of assault then if he's guilty of being really an abuser, then, that, you know yeah, if he's guilty of being an abuser he needs to go to jail if he's innocent yeah then he needs to get his life back yeah you know yeah. and all of these people piling on and all of these third party stories coming out you know it's ridiculous yeah and, it's not helping anything obviously yeah no and and the fact that magazines are running with these stories and stuff like that it's like what i mean this is the same thing that happened to johnny depp mm -hmm. you know and we know how that turned out now or at least it appears to be similar to johnny depp how everybody piled on johnny in the beginning mm -hmm. and then when it turned it turned around it was like they were equally bad at you know yeah. Yeah. so yeah i think people need to take a step back let it play out let it play out you know loki's already filmed Mm -hmm. they're going to put it out in october yep they'll probably put the ant-man thing out after august 3rd anyway yep. either way i think they'll probably do it yeah but you know i think whether it has big fanfare or just quietly gets put out there might change but sure i think we've got to wait and see what the court is and and how voracious his lawyer is defending him kind of makes me want, believe that there is some evidence because it's not just oh the, the evidence will prove it da, da, da. they're talking specific evidence they have and it's like what okay. what what a lawyer who actually believes in justice yeah <laughs> okay sure i know I, I think harry's got the point there it's a useful business sometimes yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. By the way, hello, Ed, and hello, yeah. Harry. Yeah. Um, so that's the update on Jonathan Majors. We still don't know what's happening. We still, Marvel, you know, it, it appears to still be moving forward with that in mind. Mm -hmm. I think once there is a verdict or once it starts moving one way or the other, then they'll make changes. But mm -hmm. and and they bought themselves some time by pushing everything back. Yeah. Whether or not that this had played into that, I, you know, I don't know. But yeah, I think they're trying to learn from the Ezra Miller thing. Yeah, I I sense that too. Yep. Yeah, they haven't come out and showed support. They haven't come out and d condemned. Mm -hmm. They've been just look. We're going to wait and see what happens. Mm 
-hmm. You know, the only person that's come out from Marvel and spoke about it at all is Anthony Mackie. Mm -hmm. And he said, he, he reminded people that people are innocent until yeah. proven guilty. Yeah. And that he's not been found guilty of anything yet. Yeah. So, and again, that's kind of how it really is how we need to start looking at these things. You know, um, we, people love a story. People love a villain. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's worse with the internet because you can have all these stories flying out there that have zero integrity to them mm -hmm. and they get copied and shared and they go viral and yeah. suddenly you got people oh he said this um, i'm going to give a different example the, the the firing of harry henry cavill as superman henry cavill was not fired as superman right henry cavill's contract ended mm -hmm. they brought him back for black adam mm -hmm. he said i'm back mm -hmm. now was he told and then we'll go forward was he told this by Dwayne the Rock Johnson? Hmm. Was he told this by the powers that be at Warner Brothers? Because he wasn't told that by Peter Safran and James Gunn. They weren't in charge yet. Mm -hmm. They weren't making the decisions. But they had already got started you know, their pitch, and part of their pitch was a younger Superman. And to their knowledge, he was not under contract anymore. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he was told that he was back or he made that statement, it might have just pertained to Black Adam or he might have been told, and if it does well, you'll work on other projects. Because again, that sounds like something uh, Johnson would have done. Yeah, right. Yeah. We'll, we'll bring you in and then, and then we'll do a Superman versus Black Adam movie and hype, 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 and it didn't pan out. <laughs> but everybody's like, well, James Gunn fired Henry Cavill. No, no, he didn't. It makes for a good headline, though. But it does. And there are so many people out there who are angry at James Gunn and Peter Safran and saying, oh, their movies are going to suck and all this stuff. And they're not actually giving him a chance when everybody loves Guardians of the Galaxies. One, two, and three. It's one of the most solidly consistent franchises of any superhero movie. And then you look at uh, his take on the Suicide Squad, even though it didn't do well in the box office, that had nothing to do with him. Right. That was the fact it was in the middle of the pandemic and Warner Brothers decided to release it up for free on HBO Max the same day it was in theaters. Hmm. So if you're sitting at home going, let me think, it's a pandemic <laughs> and I can go to the theater with a bunch of strange people and wear a mask to watch a new movie or I can sit on my couch and watch it here. Mm -hmm. Which should I do? <laughs> or I can, and I can pay the ticket prices and concession prices, or I can sit at home and watch it for free because I already have HBO Max. Right. So you can see that wasn't going to do well. It's the same reason Dune didn't do that well, even though it's a, a well accepted movie and people are looking forward to the sequel. Mm -hmm. So. And I think from there we should segue into our second topic. May I just add that this this has been one beautiful segue. <laughs> that was skillfully done there, Dan. That was just great. Yes. And later on you can get my master class. <laughs> in, in segueing. <laughs> on segueing, yes. Uh, which I'll be uh, performing on a segue, oddly enough. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Ed says, must be Daredevil. Yes, the lawyer that believes in... Uh, Injustice. Um, and Harry says, early er, uh, early seen original Star Secret Wars comic book has Doom yelling for Ultron to slay Kang. So they've got that as a uh, as a fallback. Yes. So it is possible. So, all right. We're going to move on to... Um, the casting of David Cornsweet, and I've been working on that name. And um, one second, please.
I should tell you guys, if I get distracted by my phone, normally I will t- turn my phone off. I don't have it today because Lisa, who you guys know is very important to me, uh, is in the hospital and I'm only not there because we're still figuring out what's going to happen, what she needs. So uh, she accidentally just butt dialed me. So she was saying that. So I was just telling her it's okay. But so if I suddenly drop off the screen and Jim's talking alone or something like that, it's because of that. So, um, but yes, and, moment, have, and have mercy on me, <laughs> yeah. faithful, faithful viewers. Yeah. At the moment, she seems to be doing well. They're still running some tests, but so, all right. So let's go uh, into, so David Cornsweth. Yeah. And you, and you, you kind of need to pronounce the E in corn sweat because if not it's david corn sweat and corn sweat sounds like something you get you know it's pretty so uh, pretty hot this summer even the corn is sweat <laughs> but you know what it sounds very kansas smallville it does you it know, absolutely does it's very earthy it's very down to earth so I think it's it's good and I think that played into their decision. It almost you know, sounds like something Lois Lane would call Clark Kent. Yeah, well hey, ex- Clark, Clark, come here. you might see that in the in the movie. That would be funny. Do you know what um, I love about this story? It it to us here on the outside, it seemed to happen overnight. It yeah. seemed like one day we were told they 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 started you know looking at people and like two days later we we have him. Yep. <laughs> when this well, thing's probably been going on for a while. Now. Yeah, I've been following the story and there was three actors they brought in and three actresses. I'm going to try to do all the names off the top of my head. One I believe is Tom Britton, yeah. Tom Brittany, mm. um, Nicholas Holt, who of course played the Beast in the X Men movies. Mm and david corn sweat and the actresses were um emma mackey rachel brosnahan from uh, uh, mrs mazel mm-hmm. from the marvelous miss mazel mm-hmm. and i want to say phoebe devonor is the third one mm-hmm. and the reports that came out was that they had paired everybody up in almost a uh, lucas way Yes. You know how George Lucas had two different casts that he was yep. uh, looking at, and they were set together. Yep. And I mean, I think I be, I'm pretty sure um, Christopher Walken was the Han Solo in the other cast, which is so mind blowing. <laughs> but oh, uh, boy, did we who did we dodge a bullet? <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh, I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> it's worth Shatner. I have a hard time with uh, doing the uh, walk-in imitation. Anyway, so and then they so they did a day of testing them as Lois and Clark. In yeah. the, so it was Brosnahan and I believe Nicholas Holt or Tom Brittany and uh, Corin Sweat was teamed with Emmy, Emma Mackey. Hmm. Then the next day they brought the three actors back to test them in the Superman costume. Hmm. But they only brought back Emma Mackey. Mm-hmm. So everybody was kind of leaning into, okay, then she's probably going to be yeah. Lois Lane. And yeah. my thought on that was, no, we shouldn't do that. Because if you ever look at a picture of Emma Mackey, she looks like she's probably the younger sister of Margot Robbie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They look mm-hmm. so much alike. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, no, let's not do that. But so I was setting up to do that story on Tuesday with all that information. Yeah. And about an hour before my Tuesday show, they announced, oh, we're going with Corn Sweat, or Corn Sweat and uh, Brosnahan. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as they announced that, I'm like, I know why they're announcing it now. Oh? Well, for one thing, they pulled out of uh, San Diego Con. Yeah. But all the studios have. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But they yeah, did that. I said, first... Oh, maybe they're maybe the show is going to be about comic books again. Well, they had to pull out because the fact is that with the fact that the actor strike could have gone into effect last night, it's been postponed for twelve days. Mm-hmm. But that would have meant that none of the actors would have been able to appear at Comic Con. Yeah. So all of the announcements would be kind of duds. Yeah. When you have like Kevin Feige and James Gunn is the only one on stage. Yeah. 
And I think James Gunn is technically part of the Screen Actors Guild. Oh, yeah. You know, having appeared three times in the MCU. Yeah. So, anyway, the... Um, but I'm pretty sure the reason they went ahead and announced the other reason they went ahead and announced it is they really wanted people to stop talking about how bad the Flash did. <laughs> you think? <laughs> the Flash went from number one mm -hmm. when no new big movies came out the next week, and it dropped to number three. Mm -hmm. And now in its third week, it's dropped to number eight. You know what number 10 is? Guardians of the freaking Galaxy. <laughs> in its ninth weekend. That one went, let's do that. Let's do that. Just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Flash went, ba -dum, ba -dum. Well, he is the Flash. Yeah. Right? Of course it's going to go fast. Yeah, he's speeding out of theaters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if I get off. We get off the show tonight, and it's already on a uh, HBO Max. <laughs> probably. They do with a flash. By the way, I've already seen part of it, or at least half of it, from freaking TikTok. And the Flash was somebody released the entire movie on the Twitter of all places. Hmm. It got taken down. Yeah. But, yeah. I flash, saw. You know, I saw the the montage thing on YouTube, but. It, like I mean, there was a couple people's heads in the way a little bit, but I did because I just I wanted to see how that how they did that for, yeah. and the the Adam West thing is like you barely see it for yeah. for that matter. But okay, was, what do you think about corn sweat or whatever his name is? Corn sweat. Corn, corn sweat. Yeah. How, well, yeah. Nobody is gonna say it like <laughs> that. Poor guy. He's if got they like him, they will. Of, him of telling people how his name is pronounced. If they like him, they'll say his name correctly. Yeah. If they yeah. don't, they'll call him Corn Sweat. Yep. So, you know, um, he's a guy. He's a guy that you see one photo of him, and then and then you see another photo of him, and he looks different. So, go ahead. I'm sorry, <laughs> I had to say that. Most of the photos I've seen of him, he looks like Superman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's not as buff as Henry Cavill, but then Henry Cavill wasn't as buff as Henry Cavill. Did you, see, did you ever see pictures hired. of Christopher Reeve when he was hired? Yeah. He was skinny. Yeah. He they all started working out like crazy. It, Chris, even you look at Man of Steel, and then you look at Batman v Superman, Cavill bulked up between those two movies, and you know how? He started working out with Ben Affleck. Yeah. Affleck is the one that taught him how to bulk up. Yeah, and Christopher Reeve w worked out with uh, Darth Vader. Yeah, David Prowse is the guy yeah. that, that's uh, right. that that's right. him up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, that's you know, that that's a silly criticism. Oh, he's not built or whatever. It's like, duh. Yeah, like he's he has his need to be. Yeah, they're yeah. not going to have a skinny, no muscle, you know, Superman. Jeez, Chris, Chris Pratt looked like me. When it came time to yes. really cast him, <laughs> you know, okay, not as bad, but you know, you get the idea. We get, and, we we understand what you mean, Dan. Yeah, and then suddenly there's a shirtless scene. Trust me, if they cast me, there's no shirtless scene. <laughs> hey, yeah. Harrison Ford at eighty, whatever the hell years old he is, got a shirtless scene in the new Indiana Jones movie at the very beginning, and it goes on for a little. while. I give that guy all the credit in the in the world for doing that scene. That was I, I did too. Scene. But I, um, uh, my ex wife was talking. I was talking to my ex wife last night, and she said, "Have you seen the uh, Indiana Jones movie?" I said, "Not yet, but I've seen some of the stuff, and I'm pretty sure they had to de-age Harrison Ford so that they could then de-age Harrison Ford." <laughs> <laughs> like they needed to run it through twice. Yeah, <laughs> he is, you know, eighty plus or whatever the hell he. Is. Yeah, and and it didn't do great in the theater. It did better than the Flash. Yeah, but it did about sixty, and yeah. Yeah. that's the low end. They thought sixty to seventy, yeah. but then you know, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull did much better. Mm. But then, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out, 
<laughs> and it made everybody go, well, maybe not every Indiana Jones movie is going to be good. Mm. So I think this one is going to have legs. It it it's a good movie. It it yeah. deserves better. There was a lot of negative reviews that came out in the beginning, but yeah. the word of mouth now is so much better. Yeah. So again, I have a feeling this one is going to have some legs and we'll get people to see it week two, week three, week yeah. four. Or All, every negative day. thing that I've seen makes me say, wait a minute, have you have you never seen an Indiana Jones movie before? Because the, st the stupid things, you know, that they're saying, it's like, you know, the third act is too unbelievable. It's like, the uh the power of god you know uh yeah. you know uh a, a a thousand year old knight and the holy grail and on and on and on and on you know and and aliens in in a in an interdimensional yeah. space you know it's like have you never seen an indian show this was tame we're, we're, compared to all that we're going so off topic but i heard I, something I, oh i'm sorry I superman, heard something the superman, other night. superman. <laughs> i heard no no i heard something the other night about indiana jones Okay. that I absolutely loved. Because you, you know the theory that Raiders of the Lost Ark would be the exact same movie if Indiana Jones never showed up. Um, I, hot wait. I'm trying, I'm, I just saw Raiders of the Lost Ark again for the millionth time. but Yeah, basically, Indiana Jones changed nothing in the movie, except that's not true. That's not true. He's the one that found the... the um, the placement of the arc. Yeah, but they would have found it eventually if he hadn't shown up because they would have had both sides. So if he had not yeah. stolen the thing. Okay. Yeah. And that's been the debate for a while. And it's been on TV shows and running jokes. Yeah. It was on Big Bang Theory. But it turns out if you think about it, Indiana Jones actually made it worse because of Indy's interference. They decided to open the Ark of the Covenant before they sent it to Hitler. He, had they not, had it not been for Indy, they would have just sent it to him, and the whole face melting thing would have happened with Hitler in attendance. I, I, you know, I, I don't. Something about that doesn't sound right. I think I swear to. I didn't. I, no, I think they're going to the island anyway. I think Belloc did want to open they, it. Belloc decides to open it because yeah. he want, because Indy actually tells him, "Do you really want to give it to?" Oh, okay, 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 okay. And Indy did have the opportunity to blow it up too. Yeah, well, he could have done they, that. So, I, so see, I see what you mean. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, had he not interfered at all, they would have found it, taken it back to Germany, and knowing the Fuhrer, he probably would have opened it up in a big pageant with all of his generals around. <laughs> okay. And he would have wiped out okay. the Nazi party. I get, I get it. I totally get it. Yep. So, so Indiana Jones is the worst thing that happened. <laughs> that <laughs> damn movie. They ought to just get rid of that movie. They ought to just burn every copy of it and, uh, and what a silly, stupid movie. <laughs> okay, let's get back to Superman, Superman and Superman, Superman. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, Ed says, Chris Evans was scrawny in the Fantastic Four movies. Then he was all buff as Cap. Yeah, he was also scrawny in um, The Losers, another comic book movie. And then Scott Pilgrim, he started buffing up some in Scott Pilgrim versus The World. But not to where he got for Captain America. They made a movie out of the losers? Yeah. I mean, it was based on the comic book? Yeah. Oh, I don't think I ever knew that. Oh, it's got it's got Idris Elba, Zoe Saldana, Zoe Saldana, uh, Chris Evans, um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Hmm. Yeah, it's a good it's a fun movie. Okay. And it's like a it's a DC movie. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I ever knew about it. It's a World War II movie. No, no. The the the, the more recent version of Losers by uh, uh, Andy Dick and Jock. Oh, I'm Not thinking Andy of Dick, the Dick. World War II Losers comic. No, Andy movie. Diggle and Jock did a more recent version. Oh, okay. Modern day version. And, that, uh, that doesn't count. <laughs> it's it's actually a fun movie. Okay. Okay. I'll take your word for yeah. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It is what the A-Team movie should have been. Ah. Uh. So, 
Jake Kirby, a good Jake Kirby worked on the Losers comic book. <laughs> okay, so my thoughts on David Corn Sweat and yeah. Rachel Brosnahan. Yeah. I think she is pitch perfect casting. Yeah. I think she's a great actress. Uh, her look, everything about it, I think is is excellent. Yeah. Um, him, I haven't seen a lot. There's a clip from a show called Hollywood that he was in mm -hmm. that shows him trying to get a bank loan. And he so feels like Clark Kent I'm in that scene sure that's that I have no worries. Yeah. That yeah. he'll bulk up and he'll lab the look yeah. and he'll do fine. But the other things is that we have an American Superman again, mm -hmm. born in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. who's part who has Jewish descent. <laughs> which I love from the fact mm -hmm. that Siegel and Schuster were Jewish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think, again, I think both of this casting is home runs. I, now, I love seeing all the, I have no idea who this is. And here's me screaming at my, you know, my laptop. Good. Yeah. Good. We don't need somebody that we really know who they are. We didn't know who the hell Christopher Reeve was. He, yeah. he was on a like soap opera or something, you know. It's like very few people knew who Henry Cavill was. I right, did because I watched right. the Tudors. Yeah, it's like that's what we want—an unknown. It's called an yeah. unknown. Now, what I thought was interesting was I saw a lot of people saying that about her, but she's from that Ms. Miss Maisel that I thought yeah, everybody right. knew and loved. Oh so yeah, that's, that's what I didn't get. She's won awards for it. She's yeah, won Emmy. They, I didn't, you know, that one I didn't, uh, I didn't really understand at all. But I'm so glad, you know, at the very least that he he's an unknown. He's not bringing a lot of, you know, baggage. He's not Ben Affleck as Batman. Yeah. You know. Hey, Bat, Bat, Ben Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms, yo. That's not for you. That's for anybody who's a Kevin Smith fan. Okay. <laughs> all right. Good. I was trying to roll with it. <laughs> um, so yeah I like the casting now I want to put aside that for a second I am a huge fan of Henry Cavill mm -hmm. not just in Superman I thought he was a great Superman mm -hmm. I don't think the scripts were up to his ability mm -hmm. um, I like the cast that they put together for the most part of the DCEU Momoa Affleck, Gal Gadot, and Henry Cavill, to me, were all great castings. Mm -hmm. Ray Fisher, I could have gone either way. I don't think he had enough to make him stand out. I'm not a fan of Ezra Miller mm -hmm. and his take on Barry, or their take on Barry. Yeah. yeah. But, so I would love for Henry Cavill to have continued. Yeah. He's not. It's time to accept that and move on. Yeah. And go see what James Gunn is going to do with Superman. Yeah. And see if he can make a Superman that everybody likes. Because a lot of people didn't like Man of Steel. I liked it well enough. I I, did. I liked him. You Ooh. know, it's like what you were saying. What goes on in the movie, I did not like at all. I had no real problem with him, uh, you know, at all. I wish he had the spit curl earlier on. And yeah. I wish his suit was a little brighter, but that's really not. I mean, as far as, you know, him himself goes, and I only saw him as Clark Kent at the end of that movie. I've never seen anything else, you know, past that. So I have no idea what his Clark Kent is even like. Yeah. You know? He spent very little time as Clark Kent. Yeah. Now, my biggest knocks on that movie are the, the major knocks. Hmm. The death scene of, him, of uh, Kevin Costner, I think, is absolutely stupid. Hmm. Totally took me out of the movie because I'm going, that would never happen. Superman wouldn't allow that. Jonathan Kent wouldn't do that. That's stupid. The the killing of Zod, I understood. I know a lot of people are upset by that. I wish he would have found a different way to do it, but I get what he was coming from. This isn't the Superman yet that we all know. Mm. He's he's growing into that. Fine, I can accept that character mm. arc. Mm -hmm. The absolute destruction of Metropolis. That he made no effort to get out of Metropolis. Mm -hmm. That I have a problem with. Mm -hmm. Those three things lower that movie for me. Yeah. I still enjoy it. I still watch it. Mm -hmm. But I get people 
who don't think that though that's their Superman now. Yeah. So I I like everything that James Gunn has been saying so far, you know, about Superman and what they're going to be doing. Um, I think I did see a quote from Corna Sweat about being positive it wasn't that did you wasn't there some quote about older, he, yeah this was an older quote he had done oh okay oh when henry cavill was still superman okay when they first talked about because he's been kind of fantastic as superman for a couple years now well that's that's good then yeah, i mean so somebody asked him he said i love superman i love the character and i he says i love what they've done with man of steel mm -hmm. and what henry cavill's doing but I hope that whatever the next iteration is has more hope and more yes, positivity. Yes, that's, that's the one. Yes, that's the one. Hey, speaking of Henry Cavill, has he come out and made any statement about the casting? He hasn't. I wish he would. I hope I that, that, that they help. will. That would go, I think, kind of go a long way if he would come out and say, I'm you know, right behind, what's his first name? Uh, David. 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 I'm 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 in David's corner. I wish him all the you know best luck, you know, and yeah. and I'm you know I hope everybody really supports him. I think that would go a long way and be really really you know uh, really cool of Henry to say something like that. I hope he does. Now the only the only one uh, I saw that responded was John Cryer, who of course played Lex Luthor on small on uh, in the Arrowverse, mm -hmm. and his response was, "I can still take him." Not helping anything. Not helping anything at all. <laughs> uh, somebody posted on Superman Day that Superman was the greatest superhero of all time. And uh, was it um, John Cryer posted, responded to that and said, I don't think so. And then um, Clancy Brown, who voiced the Lex Luthor mm -hmm. on the animated series, went, yeah, not really that great. <laughs> and then Michael Rosenbaum responded to that, who played in Smallville. Right. He went, hey, he's kind of a dick. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. What did Gene Hackman have to say? <laughs> Gene Hackman probably doesn't have Twitter. Oh, okay. And <laughs> what did I, Kevin Spacey have to say? <laughs> I'm innocent, I swear. I never touched him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that was that was, that was really cool. That's that's some good synergy, yeah. you know, there. Right. Let's see. Uh Ed says, corn sweat does resemble a young Cavill. Not that that had anything to do with it. But you know what, Ke Henry? Uh, corn sweat should resemble a young Cavill because he's playing Superman. <laughs> right, right. He should resemble Superman. Yeah. It's like Henry Cavill is supposed to resemble Superman. So they should have somebody who looks the part. Yeah. What's the age difference? Uh, corn sweat's 29. Okay. And Cavill's 39. Okay. 29 perfect i mean yeah. well i mean right i mean I, yeah. there used to be a day a long time ago where you know it was said that all male superheroes are should be considered to be 29 or you know right around in there something like that well wow. and they're planning out a 10 to 15 year universe right so you don't want to start with a 39 40 year old and yeah. they're not going to start filming until next year so he's going to be 40 41 when it comes out mm -hmm. and you're going to try to get him to stick around until mid 50s mm -hmm. i'm 53 <laughs> i couldn't do that even if i was in shape <laughs> robert yeah. downey jr was yeah. already at 40 when i've got maybe 10 years uh -huh. now he went a little longer but yeah. we saw him age you're not supposed to see superman age right right so yeah uh uh, Robert is the same exact age as me. He's April of 65 and I'm May of 65. So he's, he's 58. Yeah. He, he, you know, he got out when he probably should have gotten out. Let's see. Harry says latest issue of retro fan magazine has a special art article by Andy Man Mangles on challenge of the super friends. Cool stuff. I like Andy. Andy does great retro style comics. He did the Wonder Woman meets uh, Bionic Woman mm -hmm. comic for Dynamite, which I thought was great. I'm pretty sure that he's the one that did that. Um, but I remember him for retro comics. 
So I'm going to have to check that out. I, I don't get Retro Fan Magazine, but i got to look for that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, – well, did you have any thoughts on the casting? Other than what I can see and a little bit what I've heard, I mean, is all, you know, fine, you know. Um, yeah. I think um, anything is a step up from uh, – as far as Lois Lane goes from – What's her name? Amy. Um, Amy Adams. Amy Adams. I always said Archer. Amy Adams, which I never really cared for her. I know. was fine with her. She's cute. But yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, back in the day, as much as I said Christopher Reeve was Superman, you know, I, I'm, God bless her and everything, but I never was that fond of Margot Kidder. You know what? I think as a kid, um she like that take on lois was just kind of too far out there that real new yorker you know and she, you know kind of a little bit kind of dumb you know i just i i never really bought into her her lois lane so i guess i'm still looking for you know the perfect lois lane so i'm i'm willing to give miss mazel a chance noel neal yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Sure. I'm, I'm, I was able to meet her at a convention years and years ago, and she was just so amazingly sweet. I held the door for her once at a, at a convention, and I actually said, or she was coming down, and I held the door, and I said, after you, Miss Lane. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> Ed says, my focus has changed with the MCU. When it was building, I was all excitement. Now... You say a 15-year plan, and I wonder if I'll still be alive to see it. That sucks. Mm -hmm. I well, feel you. I feel look, you, Ed. Look at all we got, you know? I mean, that just yeah. means that the next generation is going to get, mm -hmm. hopefully, what we got, you know? I mean, I, I know. I think of that same thing, you know, but I, I, I can't complain. I got... 15 years of the Marvel, you know, cinematic universe and, and just amazing, you know, that, that I was there for everything from Iron Man up, you know, uh, to, um, in, uh, end game, you know, yeah. it's just amazing. And anything I'm getting now to me is just icing on the cake, you know, yeah. and I'm taking it, I'm taking it a film at a time and just being thankful that I'm, that I'm here to get more, you know, and if they had stopped at Endgame, I would have said, "Wow, how lucky am I to have been here for all of that?" You know, yeah. I, something I would have never have imagined as a kid. There's some people think they should have stopped at Endgame. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, worried. I, I, I hear you, but I, I mean, I still don't feel that way. Um, I'm not getting the thrill that I'm getting, and I don't see the focus Endgame <laughs> that we were going toward you know but i'm but i'm still enjoying it it's just like it's like in a different way yeah. you know but we didn't really see the focused end game in the first phase and even in part of the second phase well we d okay no but we did see that we did see the focus towards the avengers yeah you know and 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 then it started to you know build after that with with the infinity stones and everything but yeah. but i you know now i'm not I'm not as sure what what we're heading towards as I, I, I think, as I felt back then. I think the problem is that there is so much more content. So even though we're not we're not at we, the number of movies and TV shows we've had mm -hmm. is probably more or close to all of Phase One and Phase Two. Yeah, maybe even into Phase Three, mm -hmm. and we're just barely into Phase six, Five. Mm -hmm. So we're at the equivalent of, I'd say, Thor the Dark World or Iron Man 3 right now. Yeah. Which we only had, like, the hint of Infinity Stones. Yeah. Stuff like that. And we had one Avengers movie. So that's how I look at it. It's just there's so much more content yeah. feeding into it. So I think, you know it, what I mean? Oh, go ahead. I, I've been more excited for is the TV series. Yeah. You know, uh, 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 I think probably in the long run, I've been, I've been more invested in the, in those uh, than, than anything uh, well, at all. I, I think the pandemic has changed the feeling of going to a movie theater. Hmm. 
you know, and the TV shows feed were feeding us during that time when there weren't any yeah. movies. And then when we, yeah. you know, Black Widow was released on Disney Plus. And then yeah. when we finally got back into the theaters, it was like, you know, for Shang-Chi, it was like, okay, it's been a while. So we're more critical if we're going to take the time to go to the theater. Where before it was like, oh, I want to see it on the big screen. We got used to seeing everything on the TV. Right, right. You know, I, I got to tell you, I really wish we had a, you know, a brand new Marvel TV series going on right now. Hey, we do. <laughs> oh, we do. let's just oh. segue right into that. See what see what I did there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was trying to set that up about two minutes ago, but you kept dancing around. But <laughs> <laughs> have have you seen this show before, Dan? Have you watched this show before? <laughs> I don't think anybody's watching it. That's why it's a secret invasion. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm talking about this show, show. <laughs> how we dance around things. Okay. Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion. Secret wow. Invasion. Yeah. Wow. Uh, like the second one, maybe even more than the first one. Which is what a lot of people were saying a after the premiere. Yeah. Yeah. That the, you know, and I got to say, I've liked both of them, but I'm coming out of that honestly thinking, and wait, let me do this just in case. Oh, Yeah. If you guys aren't currently caught up on Secret Invasion, we're going to spoil the hell out of it right now. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> All right. So I know the big thing everybody's talking about, a lot of what people are talking about, is the very ending. Yeah. Where we find out that Nick Fury is not only married, but married to a scroll. He's getting he's he's got some scroll booty call right. going on there, which is kind of what I had said. <laughs> oh, is that? And I is said, and I said now, now, now I said, we can go back to the tape if you want. I said <laughs> I thought Gravik was going to be his son, and I said it may not be his son by birth, but he probably if he did that, he, then he raised him, and I think we're still going to find that out. Is that he became like a father figure for Gravik? That's why Gravik is so angry. And Gravik is extremely to angry. That too, you know. <laughs> hey, we'll go back to the tape. I got no problem with that. So here's the big question. Is his wife the one that brought Gra the young Gravik into the room in the beginning? Yes. I mean, yes. do we know that first? I ever, people Same are actress. saying that. Huh? Same actress. Same it actress. Is. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. Because it makes who, a lot of sense. Who ironically has worked with Samuel L. Jackson once before. Hmm. In Unbreakable, hmm. where she played his mother. Oh, ouch! Can we can we dispel this thing once and for all? Nick knows that she's a scroll. Yeah, the writer came out and said that in the script, he knew, and they didn't realize it was going to play that he didn't know. It it, to, to it doesn't him, play not. like that. I don't. I mean, I don't get. I like when I started to see people say that. I'm like, did we watch the same thing? There's no way in hell he does not know. Oh yeah, yeah. He just likes her when she puts on human clothes. That's all. Yeah. You know, he likes her yeah, better. And, that. And this goes back to, um, I think it was the Miller World message board. I didn't. I wasn't on the message board long. Hmm. Or. But somebody had posted about, would you date a scroll? And I'm like, hell yeah. Because you think about it, they could be anybody you want. Mm -hmm. One time they're Mila Jovovich. The next time they're Margot Robbie. And I didn't say Margot Robbie at the time. This was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. I said, and on Friday nights, it's B. Arthur. <laughs> that floored the chat. I bet. Uh, somebody did a song parody of, don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like B? <laughs> and it started becoming a thing on the board. So I'm like, you're welcome. But, um, I, I'd like to call out the uh, incredible scene between Don Cheadle and Samuel L. Jackson. Yep. Um, wow. Um, it, it's funny how much I loved it, but how much it also made me uncomfortable as as a white guy, you know, which I think it was probably supposed oh, yeah. to. And then I thought it was amazing that like other people could watch it in a different way than me coming from, you know, my background. 
But the scene starts and here's me going, oh, wait a minute. Have they ever been in a scene together? And then here, you know, I'm like, I'm trying to watch it. And then my my MCU brain is is twirling going like, wait a minute. No, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes. And then it's like, no, they have never been in a scene together, those two characters. They haven't been in a scene, but in Avengers Age of Ultron, when Fury shows up with the helicarrier to rescue the people of Sokovia, uh, War Machine is with them. Okay, okay. And then joins a fight from the helicarrier. Okay, but they've never actually, they they might never even have been on set together, you know, like that. Maybe not, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so. What, what, an, what an amazing, amazing scene that both those guys held their own. Oh, yeah, two incredible actors. Yeah, I mean, at the end, one does not, one has not necessarily won and the one has not necessarily lost you know, in that scene, um, I yeah, I just you know, and that was coming off of the scene between um, uh, uh, Talos and and Nick in the tr on the train, which I thought oh was, God, was yeah was great enough. And then we get this scene with Rhodey and 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 Nick. Um, you know, they just went ahead and folded, got a copy of it, folded it up, and sent it to the Academy <laughs> right, right. for any consideration. Right. You don't even um, need to read the rest of the series. Just send that one. I don't want Rhodey to be a scroll. I. I don't think he is. I don't. I don't think he is. There's still that one little, you know, lingering kind of doubt in my head. But I. I don't think that he is. I think that was all honest. You know, uh, of like when he found out about the scrolls and 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 everything yeah. like that. Um, I think Rhodey's in a very bad position. You know, he's got people to answer to. He's got a lot of responsibility. I don't think, and this is just my gut feeling with the way Marvel does things in the movies, I don't think we're going to get that that moment where we find out that someone's been a scroll for a long time. At least none of the big characters. Okay. Like, I don't think Everett Ross has been a scroll for that long. I don't think. Um, no, I don't either. Yeah. Uh, and, and for both of the, both him and um, for Rhodes, it's because of injuries. They've both been injured to the point where somebody had to work on them. Mm -hmm. And somebody would have noticed that this doesn't seem right. Right. You know, so. Now, yeah, I, I I don't think Rod Rodi is. I hope he be is. more recently replaced. Yes, like I think Ross was more recently replaced since he helped the Wakandans in. Oh in, uh, yeah, yeah. Too. So, do you think it would be too much in this show for Rodi to appear as War Machine at, by the end? Is that too much? For the for what's going on in the show to keep it gra more grounded, which is funny to say that when we're at we're we're up against shape shifting aliens, you know. I think because we're doing a TV show, I think they're going to keep it small. Yeah, I don't think we're I, maybe I, War Machine Mo shows up. I don't think anybody else is. Uh, the director was actually quoted saying that um, he doesn't want he didn't he's never wanted a bunch of cameos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because he wants to focus on the characters that he has yeah and doesn't now, want to take away from the story with cameos that said i i love the references that we're getting i think it's being handled well because i was afraid that this was going to feel pretty detached yeah not not moon knight detached but pretty detached but I, I've been loving the references that they're getting in there, and it's not distracting to me, yeah. at least at all. I, I mean, I love this references to the sly references to War Machine. You know, if they don't get off my back, I'm going to put on the suit and carpet yeah. them is, is great. I think one of the best lines, and there's always the, well, they don't explain this. They don't explain, and, and usually it's like, you know, one line could have taken the line that explained why he doesn't call the Avengers. Yeah, is perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't want to call them in and have them duplicated and then become, you know, see them doing terrorist activities. Yeah, because I could see Gravik doing that. Yeah, Sam sure. Wilson shows up, and then suddenly dressed as the foul as Captain America, 
yeah. he's out there doing something in Russia or in the Middle East or something, and you've got you know the, the war grows. Yeah. So I think that was great because there's so many times it's been like, well, they never talk about the uh, the eternal sticking out of the or the uh, celestial sticking out of the planet or or yeah. where was this guy during the it's like one line would have taken care of it. Well, here's the funny thing is when they say that line, like, should we call our friends in or or, or whatever? Here's me going, well, wait a minute. Who the hell would they be able to? Because they started ticking it off. It's like there's nobody, there's barely anybody that they know, you know, uh, uh, you know, Cap's not available. Iron Man's not available. Wanda's not available. Hawkeye is most likely not available. Thor is most likely not available. Uh, the Hulk is probably not even that much available. I'm thinking Spider-Man, <laughs> you know. Spider -Man, the, the new Captain America. The, yes. Uh, Winter Soldier. Yeah. Um, Captain Marvel. He's got the thing for that. Uh, the new uh, Photon. So there are people he could call. Ant Doctor Man, Strange. I, I suppose Ant-Man. Ant-Man, yes. Yeah. I know, it was just kind of funny. It's like, I don't know who you're talking about anymore. And you know what? To finally have the confirmation that the Avengers are defunct. Yeah. You know, and it says, because they said, if the Avengers come back, you know, and it was like, oh, okay. We finally heard there there is no Avengers at the moment. See, now I would have loved if, it, if Samuel Jackson would have gone full Samuel Jackson and said, friends, who the hell are you talking about? Dead, dead Tony or old man Steve? Who do you want me to call? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that would have been that would have been really, really something. Well, I right. like I said, I, I, you know, I hope they can keep this level going for four more episodes because I really enjoyed these two. These two. Well, we do have the important thing. We do have the important thing going on, which is uh, we see it on the screen. They're building a super scroll, mm -hmm. and they're building it in an MCU way. Mm -hmm. They're going to get the stretchy ability from Groot. Mm -hmm. They're going to get the strength and the hard skin from uh, Call of Sidian. Mm -hmm. They're going to get the heat powers or flame powers from Extremis, mm -hmm. and they're going to get I don't know what the hell they're going to get from the frost. No, I. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're not getting invisible. Invisible. <laughs> no, but they might be able to do a frost shield or something. I know, right? It's probably going to be something like that. Yeah. Well, we have that. We have that shot of Gravik doing the like Groot type of arm that's somewhere. So I'm assuming that he becomes the Super Scroll. Yeah, you know? I think so too. Yeah. So. Because there is, I, there's no character named, I think it's Clert. Clert, is, yeah. I don't think we've. There's any character in there so far named. So no name. So okay. is my better choice. So what's interesting about that, Dan, is that we're going to get an escalation in power as far as if he becomes a super scroll, that so then, yeah. that elevates things where we might need to have somebody you know, respond yeah. to that. And they might do that. that is, maybe that's War Machine. Yeah. It's War Machine. They call him Moon Knight. Who knows? <laughs> Moon Knight would be taken down in a moment by Super He's got the power of God. Come on. It, you know, it's got, it would have to be War Machine, but that's just me. I just would love to see the look on, uh, on, on uh, Dick Fury's face if Khonshu suddenly showed up. <laughs> I, I, I don't get paid enough for this. <laughs> so uh, Harry says, oh, uh, okay, Magnus Pym, time to look out for the little guy. Nice. Straight, yeah. straight from the movie. Um, but yeah, so um, I love the fact that they pulled these, these leftover threads, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of people have talked about at the end of Thor the Dark World, didn't the frost beast get loose on the planet? What happened to that? And nobody ever talks about that. That's another one of those, you know, and now all of a sudden, oh, we know what happened to him. He got taken down by S.H.I.E.L.D. or by somebody, and now they have access to it. Mm -hmm. Or what happened to Call of Sidian's hand when it got dropped <laughs> Right. 
you know, <laughs> were there any of the extremist people left over? Well, we knew they were because we mm -hmm. saw one in Shang-Chi. Mm -hmm. So now we know, okay, they got a hold of that. And, well, Groot was dropping limbs and stuff at, in a... Wakanda. In, the Battle of Wakanda. So yeah, yeah I, I think it's just fascinating as hell. Yeah. It really, really, it really, really is. Yep. Yeah. To me, that's like well done. That's just yeah. Somebody did their homework. Exactly. I would love to be one of the researchers or whatever that assists like the script, the people who write the scripts, not only digging into the comics and pulling out names of characters that they can use, but yeah. then also now going back through 15 years of movies and having little, you know, like, or, or like, you know, the script writer saying, can you quickly watch Iron Man three and tell me this or that about extremists? You know, I was like, yeah, sure. No problem. Yeah. Well, and there's some, obviously somebody who's doing that mm -hmm. because even look at quantum mania where they get Krylar, which is the name of a one-time villain from a Hulk comic where he was in the microverse, uh -huh. you know, it's like, oh, we're going to borrow this guy's name. Yeah, <laughs> and, and they don't, and they don't have to do any of that stuff. I mean, yeah, they they literally probably go call up Marvel and go, I need a scientist who's a specialist in this and this, and can you give me a name? You know, I mean, they don't have to, they don't have to pull from the comics because there's only you know a couple thousand people who will who will know that <laughs> name. But yeah. I, that's that's the lovely thing about it is when they get those little deep dives in there. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then you get all the t all the uh, YouTube channels going. Who is Krylar? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Krylar, total fail of the of this movie. It is almost disappointing that Rosa Dalton and her husband, who are the scientists working on the Super Scroll project aren't anybody there's yeah. no comic history of those two characters yeah it's like you couldn't find a stray scientist name that we could then dig into and put up comic covers and sure sure pictures done by herb trippy or you know <laughs> dick sprang <laughs> yep frank springer i don't know <laughs> that's fine uh so yeah, I, I thought the second episode was really, really good. I thought the two scenes you mentioned, the one between uh, him and uh, Talos, and then the one Talos and the one between uh, Rhodey and Sam, and uh, Fury were both awesome. Um, his reaction after leaving, after doing that, I'm Nick Fury. Even when I'm out, I'm in. Mm -hmm. And then he went over and just sat on the bench, going, "Oh my God, <laughs> yeah. I just fired." <laughs> It's, so employment <laughs> is Talos the the big bad? I don't think so. I was just messing with you last week. A lot of I I've been seeing it mentioned more and more and more, but I I I I I, I don't know. I I kind of hope not. I, you know, I but. think the thing we have to remember is that Marvel tends to tell straightforward stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think the only thing we're going to probably find out is Sharon Carter's probably a scroll. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> then the whole power broker thing suddenly makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never thought and of then that. Paul Story will be happy. <laughs> and anything that makes Paul Story happy is good. When when she came out as the power broker, I could see the light in his eyes dying just a little. It was. It was a sad day in the story household. He just, I don't know. He just needs something going for him. Maybe he'll enjoy the new Superman movie. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But he's he is a Captain America fan and everything around Cap. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. Uh, all right, did we hit all the highlights? Oh, I, real quick, Harry. Uh, I believe X Men ninety seven will be out next year. <coughs> And also, uh, you can look forward to um, What If Season 2, which will include the return of Bill Foster, the uh, Black Goliath slash Giant Man, as voiced by Lawrence Fishburne. Hmm. Beautiful. There was a Sharon Carter is a spy story that could change Spy to Scroll and make Kyle mad. 
That must be Jay. Oh, Jay's probably oh before I forget, do you, um, uh, Margot Robbie is not going to be Sue Storm Richards. Yeah. So the latest news, and we might as well cover that. We can run long. doesn't matter. Um, they're saying that Adam Driver and Margot Robbie are not going to be Reed and Sue. So the rumored leak is now rumored to not be real or that it didn't happen. So the people that came out and said, this is their cast is just working out the deal are now coming out and saying, no, not so much. And supposedly the names now are Matt Smith from Doctor Who as Reed. No. And he's 40 years old now. I could kind of see it. No, but he's a doofus. I'm sorry, Matt Smith. But yes. he is, but, no, no, no. But no. I will tell you this. I would rather see him than Adam Driver. I and could Vanessa have Kirby. rolled with Adam Driver, but I could not roll with Matt Smith. No, yeah. no, no, no. Uh, David Diggs is still talked about being as Ben Grimm. Yeah. So I'm still, I think that's great casting. Yeah. And um, Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm. And I cannot remember the name of the new guy they're talking about for Johnny. But age wise, David Diggs is 41. Reed, um, Matt Smith is 40. Vanessa Kirby is 35. Mm. And the guy they're looking at, Johnny, is 29. And to me, that's actually a good age range. Yeah. For the Fantastic Four to have at least one or two kids, I I'm glad if if there was any veracity to Margot Robbie, you know, consideration. I'm glad that that didn't go forth because we we don't need the baggage that that comes with Margot. No, you know what I mean. I all know, people is. all people were just saying uh, was she looks like Sue Storm. I mean, yeah, we no, she's, she's in. Harley she, Quinn. She's in too many other things. She's too ingrained with the DC universe, you know. And it's and it's again, it's it's Ben Affleck as Batman, Margot Robbie. Uh, you know, it. We don't need that. We need more unknowns. Jay's comment. More, it's, it's a, <laughs> I just don't like the way he looks. I I just I, I do. He he's oh. not Reed Richards. He's he's goofy yeah. Doctor Who, but he's not Reed Richards. But see, I have an easier time with that than I did Adam Driver because Adam Driver to me is just the wannabe goth Darth Vader. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this now. He's a whiny little goth. <laughs> okay. Hello, Grandpa. They don't understand me, Mom and Dad. Oh. Yes, that's exactly what it was supposed to be. It, you're right. That's exactly what it was supposed to oh, be. Oh, I never thought that was supposed to be because nobody would actually mean for it to come out that way. But that's how it came out. No, no, it was designed that way. <laughs> it was all. He's a Darth. He was a Darth Vader wannabe. That's exactly and whiny, just like Luke in the beginning was whiny. No, you can't be my father. <laughs> He's kind of a whiny no. <laughs> okay. Oh, look, we're 13 minutes over. <laughs> so how do you feel about the pre the sequel trilogy? <laughs> you know, I, enjoy, go, like, I enjoy it. <laughs> uh, Ed says, I'm teen Ian Gruffin. Uh I loved him as Reed Richards. I had no problem with the casting of the first Fantastic Four movie. Excuse me. The Tim Story Fantastic Four movie. Not the Roger Corbin movie. Right. The Roger Corbin movie. Good distinction. There. <laughs> but Ian Grawford, um, Jessica Alba was fine. Chris Evans was good. Michael Chiklis was spot on as Ben Grimm. And the fact he did it in a suit and not green screen. Mm -hmm. Just, I, I had no problem. I enjoyed the first movie. I think they che cheaped out on the second one. Uh, they they need to get done. They need to get away from Doctor Doom. Create the Fantastic Four, and then deal with Doctor Doom. You know, and if you're going to make Galactus, give us actually Galactus, not a cloud. Not a cloud. <laughs> but Doug Jones was fine as Silver Surfer. Mm. Doug Jones, by the way, is an underrated actor. 
Mm. The guy has been Silver Surfer, Abe Sapien. Abe Sapien, right. Billy from Hocus Pocus. He was the original Mac the Knife for the uh, uh, or Mac Tonight for the McDonald's commercials. The big moonhead. Oh, is that he was? Is that uh -huh. right? That was yep. creepy. Yep. <laughs> like one he of the was, creepiest spokespersons. Yeah. He was the creature in um the 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 sense of water or the shape of shape. water. Shape. The shape of water. Yeah. Uh he was in Pan's Labyrinth. Mm -hmm. The guy has just been phenomenal. He's on Star Trek uh Discovery. Discovery, right? Yeah, the guy is a phenomenal actor mm -hmm. and just consistently does great stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and I thought he was fine as Silver Surfer. I thought he did good. But yeah, Galactus, Galactanimbus, the cloud eater of the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Jay's on fire tonight. Mm -hmm. I thought Throw, Larry, Fishburne water Larry Fishburne voiced Silver Surfer. Doug Jones was the body. Larry oh. Fishburne's never been that skinny. <laughs> no offense to Larry. Lawrence Fishburne is a great actor. And he's got that great voice. Mm -hmm. But Doug Jones is this rail of a human being. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes. Yeah. He's the type of guy that you go ahead and you put in your uh, carry-on bag and he'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to film a movie in Yugoslavia. Doug, get in the bag. <laughs> Yes, uh, Guillermo del Toro has a Doug Jones carry-on bag. <laughs> when the clock strikes half past mid, baby, time to head for golden light. Yes, he's he's quoting Mac tonight. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and he says, oh, okay, I just assumed the surfer was CG. No, nope, it was a guy. It was Doug Jones. <laughs> it was uh, a guy. <laughs> all right, I think we're going to wrap it up there. It was a good show. Thank you all for tuning in, Ed, Harry, uh, Jay for popping in, and uh, we will be back next Sunday. Uh, there will be no Dan Wickline show on Tuesday for the 4th of July. I'll be celebrating in my own way that I do for 4th of July, which is I watch the musical 1776, and then I follow it now with Hamilton. Okay. <laughs> which I do recommend for everybody. Uh, 1776, the musical if you haven't seen it, is freaking brilliant. It has William Daniels, the voice of Kit. It has Ken Howard, the White Shadow. Uh, it has um, uh, James Noble, who played the governor on Benson. Mm -hmm. It has Henry De Silva. It has uh, the bartender from um, Northern Exposure. And it's just, there's some great songs, funny, funny stuff, a lot of innuendos, a young Blythe Banner's in it. So if you have not seen it, I recommend it. It is a great 4th of July movie. Uh, usually somebody is showing it, whether it's TCM or somebody else. I have it on Blu-ray, so I never miss it. And of course, Hamilton, which is the newer one from Lin-Manuel Miranda, with W. Diggs, who's in Talks to Play Things, supposedly. Uh, that's on Disney Plus, and you can see that. And if you haven't seen that, that is just a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. So, uh, let's see. The expert, uh, Jay says Dan and Kyle should do a 1776 rewatch for the Dan McLean show. Mm. I am always ready to talk about 1776, and we'll sing snippets from the musical. Oh boy, there's you a don't treat. want that. Trust me, <laughs> I can't sing so. All right. So, Harry, great to see you. J uh, Jay, Ed, everybody, have a great 4th of July. Jim, have a great 4th of July. Be safe. And keep in mind, if you're shooting off fireworks, keep it reasonable. There are pets who do not handle fireworks well. And you may think it's great and spectacular, but think about these poor animals who do not know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Do not know it, what you're celebrating. To them, it's just loud explosions. Mm -hmm. so, all right. That's it, guys. See you all next week on Wednesday for the Dan Wickline Show and back here on Sunday.